Hello everybody, Sanier, Engineer, MBA and Investor and in today's video, I want to talk about CRISPR stock valuation and of course this video comes from a tweet or rather a post on x.com and basically it says follows. CRISPR stock valuation and this is a really nice graph. I, I don't think you guys can see because of my big face here. Let's minimize this here really smaller. And you see here it says NTLA, Beam Therapeutics, Verve Prime, CRISPR Therapeutics, at a thousand category. And basically you have in the x-axis all these companies uh, stock symbol and on the y-axis of course you have the, uh, the market cap and their cash balance, right? So the market cap being the beige line and the cash being the gray line. So clearly here you can see the big difference here, right? And and and, and the difference here is not for, for us to look at, it's not necessarily to establish the point that the market cap is more than the cash for each company. It's actually to talk about how close they are because this matters, right? Think about this, right? There's companies out there that are worth 100 billions, 200 billion dollars in the tech space, yet there's no way they have anywhere near that cash. In fact, most of these those companies probably have about 5 to 10 billion dollar cash, not even more. Yet they're worth 10 times, even in some cases 20 times their cash in the balance sheet. In this case here like CRISPR Therapeutics, they're worth about $3.6 billion as of uh, this week. And that's a market cap of $3.6 billion in the stock market, yet they have almost $2 billion cash. You take another example like Beam Therapeutics, they're worth about almost $2 billion in the market cap, yet they have $1.1 billion in the cash balance sheet, right? And you look at other companies like Caribou, they're worth barely 418 million and yet they have almost 300 million dollars cash. I mean, the trend here is really obvious, right? And what is the trend is that these companies are undervalued in the market cap space. And I I have always said this in this channel in the past two years. Ever since June 2021, I felt like there were a disconnect of what these companies represent. I think in the biotech space, specifically in the genomics, more specifically in the CRISPR landscape, I've always felt like investors were no longer giving a premium to these companies, ignoring the technology slash impact that it may and will have on human beings, on animals, on vegetation, on everything around, uh, everything around what we call life in this planet. Um, and of course, you know, this is, I heard a really nice stat. I think it's like the first half of 2023 was the best half of the stock market in the last 40 years in America. And I think 70 or 80% of those gains were actually done all by like the first seven companies, the big tech companies. And that explains really well what's happening, right? I think we... Uh, in the last year or two, a lot of these big tech companies have done really well in the market cap space. Um, yet, companies that are smaller, companies that are working with technologies that aren't really well known, are not really performing as well, including CRISPR companies. I mean, you look at companies like NTLA worth just under $3 billion market cap, yet they have almost $1 billion cash. I mean, that's three times the valuation, right, of what they have in the balance sheet. And of course, this is not the only way you can value a company. I mean, let's, let's not be naive here. It's not like you, you just look at how much cash they have in the balance sheet and you find a multiplier and that's how much they should be worth. That's not the point. The point here is that these companies are undervalued in the sense where they're not going to go bankrupt anytime, guys. They will not go bankrupt. I'm sorry, but CRISPR therapeutics, if, everybody, if anybody thinks that CRISPR therapeutics will go bankrupt if the FDA doesn't improve by December, early December there for Hexacell, I think they're they're really wrong because they have enough money in the bank without raising a single dollar in the public markets or getting any additional revenue from their existing partners or new partners. They have enough money to last at least two to three years, right? And that means 
by two to three years, I mean, you can spin out so many other programs, do so many other things. I, I have a hard time believing that any of these companies, when it comes to CRISPR, NTLA, uh, Beam Therapeutics, Caribou, Verve would go bankrupt, right? The only company that I can see going bankrupt is Editas um, because of their failure with technology, because of their failure with operations, the change of leadership in the last like four years, they've changed leaders like four or five times, something ridiculous like that. I mean, this is not a company I wanna bundle with the rest of these companies that I just mentioned. Uh, Prime, Med Prime Therapeutics, I think Prime Medicine is way too early for me to say anything. I mean, they're way too early. I'm gonna stay neutral on that. And Verve, I think they're fine. But I, I really think right now there's like this person here on X.com said, I'm sensing we might see some buying interest in Q4. And I think there is definitely some interest. I think by October, end of this month, we're already October. Um, by end of this month, uh, we're going to get that uh, committee to give their external opinion and review on Hexacell, which is, of course, we talked about in the previous video. So I highly recommend you guys to watch that video. But we talked about how in most cases, when the external review approves it, then the FDA is more likely to approve that program when it comes to that decision, which we will get by early December. So I really think these companies are undervalued. Again, not financial advice, guys. I don't want to you know, mislead anybody here. I don't want to start giving uh, indications that you should be buying these stocks. Again, we never give financial advice here. It's just education information for free. You take it or leave it, it's up to you. Um, and I'm just voicing my opinion that I think a lot of these companies are undervalued. I think people have, there's a disconnect between these companies, what they're valued at and what their technologies actually is worth. And I think a lot of it comes from um, misled information. A lot of it comes from people that don't really know what they're doing when it comes to the media side of things and they're sort of pumping up things like big tech because you sort of understand what big tech is. Everybody understands what Amazon or Alphabet, Google or Meta, Facebook is. But to understand CRISPR, to understand the impact it may have, what does uh, it represents like a program like Hexacell, what does companies like NTLA, Beam Therapeutics represent to the future of humanity? I think a lot of people don't understand that. And because of that, of course, they're valued the way they are. And will they go lower? Probably. I mean, you never know. I mean, at these these points, you know, you never know what can happen. But what is for sure is they have cash in the balance sheet and they're not going to go bankrupt anytime soon. Um, and again, a lot of these viewers in, in my channel um, have expressed that, right? This is not just me speaking. A lot of people in our community sort of recognizes that uh, it's, it's going to be like an S-curve, right? It's going to hit off like an S-curve, like a hockey curve um, very, very soon. Um, as soon as end of this year, I, I really think so. It's very possible by the end of this month, if the external committee gives their green gives a green light on XSL to the FDA, I think we're we're in it for an S curve. I really think so. So we'll see where we go from there, guys. As always, subscribe if you're not, like this video if you found value, and let me know in the comments what do you guys think? Are these companies, CRISPR companies, fairly valued? Do you think I'm way off? Let me know in the comments. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much. And sorry about the small face. Forgot that I minimized myself. I'll see you guys in the next video.